just start from scratch. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how uh, to uh, put a piston and a rod on. Um, these tools are all custom that I built. Um, the, uh, it really doesn't matter what motors we're working on. If it's from a tracker to a Vitara, or it just doesn't matter. The uh, Geos, they all work in this tool I built. Um, the, uh, I just happen to need to switch this one piston around and we're doing a, a balanced motor. So these rods have already been um, weighed and ground on. Um, what I did want to show is uh, when we do a piston, see that 9320? And if you come over here, these pistons are 9326. Oh, what's this one right here? 9325. And the reason I say that, back over to the press, is when you take your engine into, say, a Napa or some just standard machine shop, as a rule of thumb, they'll just punch it for the number that the piston's supposed to be. But when they're cutting the pistons at the factory from the castings, the tooling can be a little bit worn, and it's just a smidge. But we build each motor, we build each cylinder in the motor like it's its own engine. So this cylinder on the block, somewhere on here is a number. Dun, dun, dun. Well, maybe I've wiped oh, I've got it on here. Was it number two, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, this is the number two piston. The uh, So number one, number two, number three are all identical. It's what makes them run and wear out exactly the same. The, uh, if not, you'll have one cylinder that'll fail thousands of miles before another one. But in here, what I was going to do is show you how to set up a piston. So we're going to take the arrow on the top of the piston. I'm going to point that towards the wall for orientation. And we're going to look inside the piston here and you're going to see the two notches where the bearings come together. Can you see that in there, Chris? Yeah, I see that. Okay, and then you'll see on the other side there's nothing at all. So that tells us the rod cap is on correctly. Then you'll see an arrow on the top of the rod. And depending on what year or rod you're using, they'll have different arrows. But just find the arrow and see where it points. We're going to point that rod arrow to the wall as well. I've still got the piston in the same orientation. And that tells us that I've got an arrow. Oops. Tells me that I don't have anything because I put it in the hole wrong. There we go. And now we have orientation for the piston. So what I'm going to do is lay it down here. I'm going to take my piston and slide it in my tool here. I'm going to take my rod without spinning it around. I'm going to slide it inside my piston. You know, take and drop my ring and my wrist pin in. And then uh Obviously, I just pushed it in too far. And remember, the pistons on a geo float, and they're pressed onto the rod. So what we do is we take the rod, and shove it up here. Normally, I have a little flashlight on my helmet thing that I'm using. Now we give her a little wiggle like so. Yeah, it's just 
perfectly how it's supposed to go through right there. distorts and screws rods up. I know it's a fast, easy way. People have been doing it for a hundred years that way and they should have stopped about a hundred years ago. Tired here? And if you can see down there, once you get close, we're just going for a little indentation about that far right there. And I'll back it off. Pull our tools out. Pull off the press. Slide the piston and rod out. And what we're looking for is just a nice, happy, free rod, just like that. Nothing, uh, no magic to that. And you just go and install it. Shut that off.